Hey, what's up everyone? Today I'm going to be working on two Nintendo Game Cubes. It seems like they're not reading discs. Now, I read about this being a very common issue with the Game Cubes. Um, my only thing is that it the drive also doesn't spin, at least when I tried it. When I was testing them, the drive doesn't spin on either one of them. So I'm not sure if the calibration will take care of that. I've seen some videos and I've read that uh, there are instances where if the drive doesn't spin, the calibration will take care of it, but I'm not sure. I was leaning towards it being an issue with the actual motor that spins the drive, but then again, uh, it seems kind of weird that both of these have the same problem. I doubt that the motor will be, at, will be bad on both of them, but we're going to have to test it and see. So my plan is to calibrate the laser and see if that fixes it. But let me show you what it's not doing. I'm gonna go ahead and plug this one in. They're both the same. I, uh, this is the um, two of the Game Cubes that I got from a uh, lot of video games. I think I might have mentioned it before. Uh, I got two Game Cubes, two Xbox 360s, a Sega Genesis, uh, two uh, Game Gears, um, some other miscellaneous stuff. I think I got a oh and an Xbox Super Nintendo, a Super Nintendo, and a couple of PS2s. So I'll be working on all those here in the next few videos. But for now, let's go ahead and test this one. Uh, one of these had some loose parts in it. This one. So there's something in there. I'm kind of afraid to test that one. I'm afraid it's going to short out. Uh, if any, if those are metal parts and they somehow get lost in the uh, electronics but this one's all dirty from inside you can see some hair there and god knows what else but for now i'm plugging the power let me open this up you can see the uh, uh the lens right there so i'm gonna check to see if the lens if the lens uh moves from there if, so it's all the way to the front and the spindle itself i'm gonna put it about right there. Or actually, what I do is when I, when I put the game in there, I'll see where it's positioned and see if it if it moves from there. So the game is right there, and the laser is all the way to the front. So let's see if anything happens. Yeah, see the game is still in the same spot. So the game did not move. So the motor itself didn't work. The laser did move. The laser now it's uh, closer to the. So it was better lighting, but. But the laser is now closer to the center. So the laser is moving, and we can confirm that by taking the uh, unit apart and running it with the cover off, so you can see if it moves or not. But I did do some some um some testing and. The motor is not spinning for the drive, but the laser does go uh, in and out. So the laser is, at this point, from what I can tell, uh, working. So, except for the fact that it might not be calibrated. So we're going to check the calibration. I'm going to check. Uh, there's a couple of uh, tests we can do to see if it works or not, or if it could be if it could even be calibrated. If it can't be calibrated, then I'm going to go ahead and order a replacement laser and or a mortar oh i need to use the game bit for this which is a special bit for these specific screws on some of these nintendo devices i'm going to go ahead and take these out there's four screws holding it in place i'm going to go ahead and zoom in a bit so you can see what's going on So that's what the screws look like. Uh, let me get that somewhere. I'm trying to get, hopefully you can see that. So we're taking four of these screws out. And the other one is still in here. There it goes. Top cover. 
so let me uh, let me test this again with the cover off so you can so you guys can at least get an idea of what's going on. I'm gonna go ahead and plug it in again. And the game is should be back in its case. So game is sitting like that. The laser is all the way to the front. Uh, in order for the uh, drive to start spinning, you need to you've got these two these two um, I don't know what they are switches, I guess. So you need to make sure that those are both engaged. Power. Wow, it did spin. Okay, so it did spin. I thought it wasn't spinning, but this time it did spin. So maybe there could also be an issue with the cover not engaging. See right there, it didn't spin. But it did momentarily spin, so that could also mean that maybe the motor is good. And it's just the fact that it's not calibrated. So, yeah, let me turn it off. Turn it back on. Okay. Um, let me see real quick here. You can see the laser go in and out, but it's not finding its its its. Uh, I guess it's it's not finding where it needs to be in order for it to start playing the game. So let's continue with disassembly here. Okay, so to get to the optical drive, uh, there's some stuff we need to take apart. We need to start with this here. This just comes off. It's the back cover. So we're going to go ahead and also clean this out once we figure out what the problem is and if we could fix it. It's pretty dirty in there. It's got all kinds of stuff that shouldn't be in there. Now this front cover here, you got to be careful with this ribbon cable. It's soldered onto the board so if you were to somehow pull on it too hard, there's a good chance you're going to damage the board itself. Or not the board, but the cable and you need to actually, then you would need to solder uh, the cable back on there. That's not always fun. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and just remove this, these two screws here. And take this board off this cover. It would just be easier to maneuver around the whole drive here. Okay, so we leave that there. Set this other one aside. And now we need to remove all these screws here but before we do that I'm gonna go ahead and take off these um, I'm not sure what these are I think these are to lock in they're springs I'm not sure what but what what their purpose is but those have some long screws that need to come out let me go ahead and take those out too I was looking at the uh, the tear tear down guide. Um, hopefully, I remember all the steps. This one, this one, and now we need to take oh, the fan off also. So for the fan, the fan has two screws: one right here, and one over here. Go ahead and take that off. What we're trying to do is we're trying to get to the actual board, the um, the driver, the main board for the optical drive, and adjust the uh, the laser's intensity or the laser's strength. We're going to make it a little bit stronger. What's happening, what I'm thinking, from what I understand, the laser doesn't have enough power. Over time, it weakens, so we need to give it a little bit more juice for it to be able to read some of the games. Now that we have all this apart, now we can start taking off all these other screws. I think there's there's a bunch of screws. I don't know how many there are. Three, six, uh, maybe about 10 or 12 screws. Let's go ahead and take these out. We 
Now we need to remove the actual optical drive from the console. Uh, there's a plug, this plug right here, that plugs onto this, and that's all there is for that. So let's go ahead and set this aside for now. And let's focus on this. So now we need to take off these four small, five small screws here to get to the board. So in order to do a proper calibration, we need to adjust this pot here to somewhere between 200 and 500 ohms. And it's measured, there's three legs on this, on this pot potentiometer. Uh, one on the left and two on the right. So we measure from the left and of the two on the right, the bottom most uh, leg here. Let me go ahead and get my meter. Put this down right here. And we're gonna measure from this leg. So we're trying to get between 200 and 500. Let's see what we have. 226, so it's on the lower end I'm just if I could get it to about 400 and uh, see what that does. So we're at 228. We're going to rotate counterclockwise. Just very about a, God, maybe about, I don't know, one-tenth of a turn. Okay, now let's measure again. And we're getting... It went down. <laughs> 130. That's weird. It should have gone up. Let's see. Uh, right there. Come on. Okay, so now we're going the wrong direction, it seems. Okay. Well, then let's go this way everywhere everywhere I've read says that you got to go counterclockwise 555 so that's a little too high let's back up a bit well, the good thing about this is you have a meter so the meter is going to tell you what direction to go 309 okay so you see how I barely moved it and it uh it jumped like 200 ohms. Let's see what we have now. 392. Ooh, that's pretty close to where I wanted. I wanted somewhere in the mid 400s. I think I might have gone too far again. Come on. 341, 345. Man, we're going to be here all day Four fifty six, perfect. Okay, that's where I want to be, around four fifty. So now, let's go ahead and put this back together. I'm not going to attach any screws yet. We're going to do a uh, kind of a dry test here. the shielding on so it doesn't screw anything up uh, like that this one goes like this so make sure this this here fits in there 
make sure here it's snap and let me reposition this and now we're gonna leave this out we're gonna leave this out power let me give the lens a quick cleaning where is my isopropyl alcohol here it is again this is the alcohol that I use got it off Amazon for like ten dollars I think for the bottle it should last me a long time okay and then once I determine that it's working if it does work I'll go ahead and uh, try to lube the the rod that the lens travels on and whatever other uh, parts are in there that can be lubed okay let me look for the game here and if it does start spinning and it, it initializes then I'll plug it in into my monitor uh, we'll plug that in and see if it actually starts the game move this all the way to the front like that get my power let me find out where the power goes disoriented here uh, trying to get in the way it's right here okay powers on there push these two levers back and fingers crossed nothing so it's not spinning still we have the correct volt the correct voltage Still nothing. I mean, you can see that the laser does initialize. Try this again. Nothing. Okay. No, I don't think I need a controller for this to start, so no need for that. Nothing. Okay, let's recheck that the volt, not the voltage, but the resistance on that pot. I'm going to go ahead and shut this down. put this here so you can see what's going on we have 312 I think I went too far 128 let's test 128 if that's the case then I do have a bad laser and I'm gonna have to replace the laser because that's it doesn't fall within the range of where it should be, which is 200 and 500. But this is just for just to see and check and see if um, the less resistance the better, or the more resistance the better. Let me go ahead and turn this on. Okay, so that is working now. Um, so in this particular case, I think we were right at the threshold because it was at two something, the low 200s when I measured it. Let me take it to 200, see what, see what that does. 
So if I understand this correctly, and if I'm wrong, please uh, let me know. Uh, the less resistance, the more power. I think that is the case. So I'm trying to get up to about 200. And maybe that's why they tell you to turn it counterclockwise because you want to add more power, which is starting to make sense now. So we're at 223. Let me get it to two, as close to 200 as I can. That's going to be tough though because it's so, it's very non, what do you call that, I think non-linear. Two forty-one. Oh man, I'm gonna be here all day. Again. Two forty. Two forty-four. Didn't even go down. Two o two. Okay. Plug it back in. And is spinning. Engage. Okay, 200. All right, with that said, let me go ahead and plug in the controller and the AV cable. And let's see what we have on screen. So I'll be right back and let me reposition the camera. Alrighty, got the GameCube connected to the monitor. Let me power this up, see what it does. Okay, I'm going to trigger the uh, levers for the game. Okay, the drive is spinning. There it is, Desert, Desert Storm. Press start. All right, looks like we have a working GameCube. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna go ahead and again, reposition the camera and start cleaning some of the components. Actually, what I'm going to do is I'm going to clean the covers off camera, clean those off good, and then come back and do some minor maintenance on some of the uh, components for the optical drive. So again, I'll see you here in a few. Okay, so I went and cleaned off some of the parts. I didn't take this out because uh, there are thermal pads underneath the the heat sink here for the main chips and I don't have any any thermal pads to replace it with so I cleaned around it as good as I could and we'll leave this as is now we just need to start putting everything back together and check in to see if everything works as it should so my plan is to go ahead and um, test the other the other unit to see if it if it does the same as far as the adjustments, I'm going to check to see what what the uh, resistance is on that on that pot and adjust it to see if it also fixes it. And if it does, cool. I'm just going to break it down off camera down to where we do the adjustment and then take it from there. That way, I don't you know spend another half hour or so trying to get there. You already know what to do anyway. So that's the plan. So let's put this one together and uh, proceed from there. Okay, one down. So for the second one, I'm just gonna go ahead and uh, take this, just the bottom cover off. For you guys on camera just to see what's in there hopefully it's nothing broken and then once I take this cover off and determine what's 
rattling in there, we'll go ahead and uh, continue with the rest of the removal off camera to expedite the process. Two, three, four. pallets from a pallet gun so I must have jammed them in there I'm hoping it didn't short anything out um, let me go ahead and plug this in nothing okay so I'll see you back in a in a few let me go ahead and start taking it apart to adjust the the pot Okay, we're back. Let's measure the resistance on that pot to see where we're at. Switch this over. Let's see. This one's at 579. This is higher than what it should. What it should be, so let's bring it down. Yeah, the, the other one was like a 200 something. So let's bring this one down a bit. Let's test it. 324. Let's bring it down to the 200s. And then we'll give it a test. 214. So 215. Let's see what this does them out. Let's bring this baby back in here. Alright. Like this. Okay. Power, power, power. Here's the power. Where's my game at? Right here. All right, let's see what it does. It should hopefully start spinning. Okay, yeah, there we go. So I'm gonna go ahead and put it back together and then uh, hook it up to the monitor to see if we actually, just to confirm that it actually does work. But from what I can tell, it's already reading. Okay, let's put the game in there and see what it does. Power, go ahead and uh, go to the monitor. So far so good. I can hear the disc spinning. Okay, so the disc is working. And we were able to fix two game cubes that were having issues with the laser by adjusting the potentiometer uh, and making sure that it fell between 200 and 500 ohms. They were both a little bit off. So there you go. Uh, the best way to do this obviously is by using a meter and that cuts a lot of the guesswork out. So, alright guys and gals, we have two working GameCubes and we're back in business. See you in the next video. Have a good one.